It's Zach Eady with the Purdue Men's Basketball, and you're watching Boilers in the Stands. Welcome back to Boilers in the Stands. I just beat Braggs to it Welcome as he hops on. back because I'm back in Boilers in the Stands. Yes, I just jumped in here last minute. And then Joe tried to take the intro from me. And then I just went and intercepted that pass. He really did. As if Tyson Bajan threw it. Not Aiden O'Connell who lit it up here. Did, uh, did not throw any interceptions at did all. Did not. I mean, no, he's a, he's a bona fide star as I try to get... And just completely screwing up the beginning of this show. But hey, we're back here. This is Boilers in the Stands. Uh, great, off to a great start here. Boilers win big. Uh, you know, we were, it was the fun little story here uh, with these, with this small town team and the social media push they put out there. Uh, but things got pretty chippy early on. And I think, like you said, Craig, the, the, the cuteness of the social media, like, uh, stuff kind of went away pretty quick with Zach Eady, huh? Yeah, it got it got chippy more than once. <laughs> there there were a few different times things got really physical and um that's actually something I really like about this team. Uh in, in that Arkansas exhibition game too. There's a little bit of fire in these guys and a little bit of fight and it's been Lance, it's been Zach, it's been um, multiple different guys, Mason, TKR, whoever it is and and I want to see a little bit of fight. Um, if there's, we get a technical every once in a while, so be it. Let's, let's, let's see some, uh, real fire out of these guys out there. And I just think it adds a little bit of an extra edge. Yeah. And you know what, uh, you can say all you want, you know, like, oh, well, Hey, you know, it's, it's, you know, not it's Samford, you know, like wh what do you expect? You know, this isn't a, a team. This is a team you're expected to beat. Well, Hey, just so you know. Michigan State's losing right now 27 to 17 to James Madison at home uh, with five minutes, still a long way to go, five minutes to play in the first half. But at the same time, that's the number four team in the country right now that's down 10 uh, to their starter, to, to their team, you know, that they're starting the season with. So uh, Purdue didn't play with their food. And to your point, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. You saw it at the end of last year with Zach Eady, you know, he, he's not going to take this crap where he's just getting mauled and he was getting hooked. And that's something, I mean, we know here at Purdue that can cause serious injury to your star player. Isaac Haas went through this, right? And you know, Zach Eady's the defending national player of the year. And you know, it was put on full display in the Arkansas game where you saw some guys, you know, analysts on Twitter saying like, Hey, you know, Eady gets called for the foul here, but he's shoved four times before it happens. At some point, Zach Eady should demand the respect that he should get. He's not a freshman anymore. He's reigning national player of the year, you know, and enough's enough. And I don't mind him, you know, not only not playing with your food, but getting feisty with the, with the mice, you know, if the mice want to try to come up and, and bite, then you can stomp on them all you want. And, you know, you gotta, you, th there needs to be some competitiveness and not just like, hey, yeah, you got to keep your head down and play. Don't worry about the what the refs are doing. But at the same time, I didn't mind the message being sent, Joe. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, you know, that stuff is good to see. And maybe in a close game, it's who knows what, you know, if you want the actual technical or not with Lance Jones too and stuff. But it was kind of just a message. It felt like, like they're not going to, you know, they're not going to stand for it this year. Like they're, they're here, they're ready. Um, you need a few guys like that. Mason Gillis has kind of been that guy, I think, for the past couple of years of like, I'm going to, you know, he's not afraid to get dirty. Lance Jones did it today. You saw Edie a bit too. Um, and it just shows that the team's together, I think, more than anything. And yes, you, I think you, there 
can be some complaints if like it actually mattered like a technical or something but at the same time i think we'd all rather see that like this team being gelled fighting for each other uh you know standing up for each other than being like a team that's not together and apart yeah 100 percent um so guys get into it craig uh you guys were at Mackey arena tonight I, I was home you know i just got done with a bear show uh, so I had to stay home and, and do the work and, and I, I was watching, I watched the majority of the first half or I watched the entire first half and the majority of the second half and had to get to work here for the last, you know, 45 minutes. So want to start with you guys first, as you guys got a more clear view of everything that went down tonight, Craig, I'll start with you, uh, your first takeaways of what you saw from the, the new boilers. I think yeah. you're muted. You're muted. I can hear you. Man, man but... it's usually it's usually Joe that makes that mistake. Don't throw it. Don't throw Joe under the bus. You did it now. We'll we'll get a jar, and every time one of us do it, we'll yeah. put you know a dollar, well, or five dollars in the jar, and then by the end of the year, we'll have a nice steak dinner on our hands. When we're sitting here, we're close enough. We try to go mute so that you don't pick up the the ambient sound around yeah. us, uh, back and forth and whatnot. But anyway, um. Long story short, if we shoot 55% from three uh, every game, I, I bold prediction, we're probably going to go undefeated. Uh, that, that's just not going to happen. We're not going to shoot that well every single game, but they shot the heck out of the ball tonight. Um, and Fletcher and Braden especially and Cam all shot really well. But here's my litmus test for whether or not you actually watch the game tonight. Because somebody's going to pull up, some writer or somebody do um, podcast or somewhere is going to pull up the box score and he's going to look at Lance Jones's box score and go, hey, uh, Lance Jones, is that new addition? He really didn't do much tonight, did he? Anybody who was here actually watching the game knows how important Lance Jones was tonight. Uh, just breaking the press, like completely changed <laughs> our ability to handle pressure uh, very few turnovers against the actual press press portion. Both of his actually came in the half court. Um, big athletic, strong guard with an extremely good handle. He was breaking the press or coming up against the press more often than Braden was tonight, uh, tonight actually. Um, just, I thought, really important. On that aspect alone, and he drove by, got down into the paint, kicked it out, got to the rim a couple times. All of those things are so extremely valuable to this team. Yeah, and yeah, you know like, what? I think my observation, sorry, Joe, to cut you off, but I think my observation from Lance Jones, and I texted my buddy Sylvie uh, from Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000. He's a Southern Illinois guy, a diehard, and he told me how much we were going to love Lance Jones. And I said, well, right away you could see how he's fearless. You know, uh, one step over, bang, you know, he's going to take that quick shot. You know, he uh, some of his dribble technique – you could really see the confidence in. Uh, he just seems like an attacker, a guy that's not going to be afraid to put up the shot. And Sylvie texted me back. He goes, yeah, he's fearless, but sometimes that's his worst enemy because he'll go one for 12. But what Sylvie doesn't know is on this team, you need that guy that even though he's one for 12, he's going to keep putting it up because last year we had guys that would get a little gun shy and you know what? At the end of the day, you got to keep, if you're a good shooter, Matt Painter's talked about this a million times. If you're a good shooter, you just got to keep shooting them. The worst thing you can do is roll up into a ball and get scared about it. Uh, and it doesn't seem like Lance Jones is that type. Lance Jones is not scared at all. Uh, I will say you saw a little bit of, I, I don't, uh, whatever. I guess I'm starting with this and Lance Jones had an insane game. You did see a little bit of the like forcing a shot, I think. Two of his threes were late shot clock. Those he misses them, whatever. He had to put those up. I think in the second half, a little bit of that kind of worried me is just a little bit of tunnel vision, but also they were on like a 20 to two run and having fun. So I don't know if I fully, you know, blame Jones for that, but he was, he was phenomenal. The point of attack defense, the screen navigation, just being able to hound a guard. I don't know if, I mean, the, if, the ball handling in that was great too, but like if he just wants to defend like that and then be whatever on offense, I think Purdue takes it. He can be a guy that will be the go to um, perimeter defender, at least spe specifically in guards. I think bigger wings will still, still a bit of a question. And that might still be more of a Morton Heidi, maybe. Uh, that's where I kind of want to go is Heidi, is he's just so, he's impressed me so much, these two exhibitions in this game. Um, 
I know we'll, we'll talk a bit about like sample size and stuff because I've been the, you know, don't worry because it's only two games and the, I, we'll get into that. But three games, I am so impressed with Heidi. I would not like, I would not be shocked if there's a time where he starts, if it is like a bigger team that Purdue has to play. Um, he, ju- he can shoot well. Painter kind of talks about it. He just kind of takes what's given to him. He had the one, I'm looking at the corner right now. He had it caught in the corner, one dribble to the baseline. Uh, nothing really there. He jumps, kicks out, and I think it was a Smith or a lawyer three, um, or Smith three maybe. I forget who. But just being able to make plays like that, uh, get to the rim. He needs to finish at the rim a little better. He'll do that. Uh, and just the athleticism in general. I buy the defense. Like he's just, he's impressed me in pretty much every facet of the game. And, and I am. If he's your sixth or seventh man coming off the bench as a redshirt freshman, you're, 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 uh, you got some good business going on. If that's the case, absolutely. Uh, Corey Lesney in the chat's asking, "Why are you? Why are we late, boys?" Well, uh, a they were waiting on me. I had a show to do, and B we are as the season goes on. We're gonna try to go live as soon as games are over. Uh, but for these first few games, you know, Craig and Joe have uh, gone to the press conferences and and seen the players and talked to Matt Painter. Uh, and as we get deeper into the season, um, the hope is that I'll be here in studio, so to speak, ready to go live with one or the other of these guys. And then the other will go in and report back from the press conferences and we'll try to go live as soon as the game ends. But while we're in this early season, uh, warm up game, so to speak, no disrespect to our opponents, but at the same time, that's what these are. Uh, I want, uh, we're going to take our time with some of this stuff. And then as the season goes on, uh, try to get faster and faster with, um, you know, yeah. launching these shows. Just thought I'd give you guys a heads up hey. on kind of our game plan here at Boilers in the Stands. Greg, you re- you remember that trip we took to Wrigley? Yes, I did. You remember which player that I was screaming from like the third seat was going to be so important this year and have a breakout year? No, because I was drunk. <laughs> it was cam heidi and i was on him early i was on him often about how big of a year he was going to have for us um and i never wavered in that once throughout the entire <laughs> summer and early fall yeah well i mean you yep, can see it wavered. with the the, <laughs> ath- <laughs> the athleticism is there uh that's what this team needs another guy as we're kind of kicking it around the horn with our instant reactions to this game Another guy that showed some extreme athleticism here tonight was Miles Colvin. Everybody's really excited to see this guy get out here. Derek Mulliken says, I got serious Ivy flashbacks on both Colvin. Oops. Ivy was raw as a freshman and didn't play defense, but by the end of the year, he was so improved. I'm seeing the same trajectory for Miles Colvin. And that is something he's going to run into is the constant Jaden Ivy comparisons. And I, Maybe that's going to be a bit unfair for Mo, uh, for Miles, considering the uh, meteoric rise that Jaden Ivey had here at Purdue. But at the same time, their athleticism is right there, right? I mean, uh, Miles Colvin had a block. Forget the alley oops. The block to me was the most impressive, you know, thing. Uh, one of the most impressive things I saw tonight. I mean, he took that off the top of the top of the square on the backboard. Um, so to me, and he knocked down some threes, you know, from the few times I've been able to see him on TV and live in person, you know, his, um, three point shots been shaky, but it was nice to see a few go down the well. Yeah. He's not scared to get him up. He will fire. And that's not a bad thing. Like that's not a knock on him. Um, he will 100% get up shots, put up five threes. Uh, it was second, no tied for, or he was third on the team in shot attempts with eight attempts. Uh, pretty balanced overall, so that is what it is. But yeah, no, I think they're the Ivy comparison to me doesn't make sense in terms of who they are as a player. I don't think they're the same player pretty much whatsoever. Um, but yeah, the athleticism is there. Like Ivy is a dude that's gonna just take the ball and you know just get where he wants. I think Colvin's gonna be better off ball, you know, catch and shoot threes. He already showed off the the smooth stroke today. Um, attacking closeouts, getting to the rim that way, running in fast breaks. Um, need him, want him to probably do a little bit more on the defense, and that is just going to be the area where it determines what he does, like how much playing time he gets. There's a few times he got lost. He makes a good couple good plays also. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Also, in just smaller thing, I'm curious to see what his uh, shot is like off movement. I think stationary, it's really, really solid. I 
but it seemed like when he had a little bit of movement, it kind of gets a little bit wonky. I don't know if that's just the angle that I saw it, whatever, but it's just something I'm going to monitor as well with him. Craig, your thoughts on miles Colvin. I mean, I thought he looked a lot better and the main thing is defensively. And we've had this conversation of, and we've had Rafael on the show and you remember Rafael talked about how impossible it is to, to learn that defense fast and how that was the, the hardest thing for him to do to get on the court. And he ended up being one of our best defenders of all time. So it's just not an easy process coming in as a freshman, knowing all of your assignments, all of your rotations, everything else. If he can do that consistently, he's going to get minutes. And when he's had to defend one-on-one, he's done a really nice job. Uh, we saw that big block in terms of what he can do in terms of elevating and defending the rim a little bit against other guards and things like that. Um, it, it's been just on rotations a little bit. And you didn't see it near as much tonight. You saw it in a couple of the exhibition games. But if he gets that figured out, his shot's just too good. And, I mean, quite frankly, braden has got that little 18-foot pull-up that he dribbles into. Um, Miles can do that with another six inches <laughs> of height, and, and he can pull up and shoot that pretty much against anybody at his position any time, and that shot is super pure um, without any trouble at all. So You guys get thrown that, out again? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There's some yelling. Um, but I don't, you know, we're not going to be able to, keep him off the court because of the shooting that he brings. Well, give me updates as you guys get um, arrested and walked out in handcuffs. Uh, oh, and, that, and then I finish the show just rambling. But before you do, um, uh, Sh- Shara, just, just give me updates. I don't really care. If you get arrested on the show, this is going to be great content. So I really, you know, I'm actually rooting for it. Uh, Shara Klasner uh, in the chat saying, how about our pace tonight? So different from recent teams. You guys were at the stadium, but watching it on the telecast, Robbie Hummel really pointed this out a few times about how you could really see Purdue with an emphasis to push the tempo, go into high pick and roll, you know, at the, you know, right as they're crossing half court. Uh, these are things that Robbie was pointing out, um, you know, on the telecast, Joe, I'll start with you, you know, were there some wrinkles and what was your observation in the pace of play? Yeah, no, it's, it was very apparent. It was apparent. I think in the exhibitions too, I kind of called it out of like, Hey, this team might be pushing a little bit more and this is what they do. Uh, the, you saw it a couple times where they just used it to break the press. That was good to see just being able to kind of, cause they have more guys even beyond Jones. Like I think Heidi's more comfortable driven the ball. I think Gillis has shown even a little bit more um, flexibility and just being able to like take a dribble or two if needed. So you have that. And then Braden, like Braden's at his best when he can run, uh, you're going to get a couple crazy plays that maybe are turnovers. I personally am fine with those because of all the other stuff he can do. Lance Jones is a guy that can grab and go like there's multiple guys now that can really grab and go. And it just brings a different element to this team. It's no longer purely <laughs> waiting on Zach Eady to post up. It is okay. Braden go dribble, uh, push this, get this down in three seconds and we'll see what we got. Or Braden dribble and pull up from three because you are four for five from three today. Um, and then that, you know, that leaves guys like Fletcher Lawyer, the first three of the game. I know it's kind of wonky with whatever Sanford's uh, like, trap thing off the tip was but even that push the ball <laughs> Laurie gets a wide open three starts the season with that um i'm super excited for it like these even you know even more more ends up with five assists and i assume a couple of those were in transition i do have the stats here um 20 oh, well, 20 here you go no, no no different stats different stats yes, uh sir. 26 possessions in transition 1.0 wow. 1.04 points per possession i'll do some cross-referencing for last year numbers as you guys talk but that feels pretty high 26 transition possessions. yeah because craig i wanted to ask you you know i mean you've always been such a um somebody that has made the observation so many times on these shows that you know some of the sets they run are great but you just love to see some pick and roll and let your guards get downhill and create. Uh, And I felt like you saw a lot of that tonight. Uh, Is that how you felt? Yeah. I mean, I think we did see a lot of that and we saw it really with, with multiple different guys rather than just Braden doing that. Um, Whether it was Fletcher, whether it was Lance, uh, Miles, um, Miles, Miles moved a little bit too quick the one time and didn't let Berg get set. And then he draws an offensive foul, but He'll learn that pace in, in terms of how he's got to let Berg or or Edie or whoever's out there get set. Uh, but they they ran it with multiple guys um, tonight. But I still think the 
bigger thing was just what we did in transition and pushing the ball. And, and a lot of that was Jones, uh, but Smith also. And then you saw a couple different times. Cam had that runner. He caught it um, kind of at the top of the key after they broke the press really quickly. And he drip, took it from there and drove in and finished with his left on a really nice drive. Uh, so, you know, like Joe said, I, I think there's multiple guys that are just more comfortable running and, and in transition, getting the ball and feeling confident doing something with the ball. And Miles and Heidi both are real comfortable elevating and attacking, whether that leads to a foul or a made shot or a dunk or whatever it may be. Yep. Uh, Andy Plunk up, here in the chat says fast break points for Purdue tonight, 19. I looked at the stats. So 26 transition possessions this year or this game. The highest last year was 20 against Milwaukee in the first game. Uh, and besides that, there was only like four games that was over 10 for the entire season. So this this game had more transition points for Purdue than or transition possessions than any game last season. Um, and I think it just speaks to the versatility. And that's, I think, going to be the key for a lot of fans, especially for me, is this team can beat you in so many ways. Purdue's obviously, we've already mentioned, maybe they're not going to shoot uh, 55% from three. But if the shot's falling, you know, you can't double team, triple team ED down low then. You, Sanford did it in the first half. ED had one shot attempt, I think, in that half. They come out and they have to kind of stay more true on the perimeter. And now ED gets his and uh, it can just go back and forth when this team is fully on. Um, hey, Joe, did um, did uh, Braden's three when he stole it in the backcourt? And there were three Samford guys down there and no Purdue players. And he shot it and then stared at the crowd. Does does that count as transition bucket? Uh, I could check, but I would assume so. I don't know. It's yeah. either that or it's either that or there's like uh, just a category for just like basically random plays. Um, yeah, but I would assume it's transition. So I guess the question is, and, and JB, JB brings it up, and it's something I asked myself during the game. He asks, was the tempo a conscientious or a conscious decision on our part or just Sam for daring us to push it with their pressure? Uh, you know, because that's, you know, obviously they're playing small, so they're going to try to, you know, if you're playing a team that has a big, so it's big versus big. Like, do you think that Purdue is going to try to, have an emphasis on this style of play all season, or is it going to severely slow down when we get to big 10 play as I'm somewhat predicting and kind of hoping I'm wrong on. I think it's more, I, if they're going to, somebody's going to pressure us, make them pay. And, and that's, I mean, you know, my buddy, Josh Douglas, who's a high school basketball coach. That's he always brings that up. If they're going to pressure you, make them pay. Don't keep on pulling up when you get down to the end and waiting and kind of starting all over again in the half court. And multiple times tonight, they they made him pay. And some of that last year maybe just was not having the guys that were super comfortable um, doing that all the time, going ahead and attacking the rim once they once they broke the press and Braden passes it off to the wing or something like that. But I, I think you saw tonight plenty of guys comfortable with trying to make them pay when they when they pressured too much and we broke through and had an advantage. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like I think. I don't think this team's identity will be running. I think it's just another tool that they have. And so if it calls for it or it doesn't have to be an emphasis of like, okay, this team presses, we're going to run or this team's small, whatever. And it could be more of like, oh, here's a long rebound and let's just go. Um, I think that's probably, I think that's probably the realistic scenario is it's just used more throughout a game, but maybe isn't like a pure, uh, like the full on emphasis for this team. Uh, but it'll be interesting to watch because it is fun. Like the Mackie was electric when they got out and ran a few times and, you know, Colvin throws one down and stuff like that. All right. So um, I guess what we always do during the year, eventually we'll start building out. Um, we'll start building out some uh, segments and it won't just kind of be all over the place, but what the hell we're having fun here to start the year. Joe, you're the young buck. I can't read this. You got to read it. Me and Craig are too old. You, you if I the, the the words are too small, numbers are too small. Help the old guys out. My bad. I'll uh, I'll try to make it bigger for next time. But Purdue ninety eight, uh, Stanford forty five. Okay. Uh, you know, I think when you look through, so three point field goal, sixteen of twenty nine, fifty five point two percent. Purdue was thirty four sixty two overall, fifty four point eight percent, fifty four rebounds, which is pretty crazy. Uh, it's more 42 on the defensive side. That's what happens when Sanford shoots five of 31 for three, 29 assists, 29 assists out of the 34 makes for Purdue. 
Um, so that's pretty much almost every bucket was an assist. Turnovers was 15, 10 blocks, nine steals for Purdue. Um, and yeah, let's see. Points off turnovers, Purdue wins 15 to 11. Uh, bench points, 47 to 30, they win. Fast break points, they win 19 to 6. Um, and then, yeah, the 29 to 11 assist. Purdue leads 39 minutes and 47 seconds of this game. It says it's tied for only seven seconds. So six seconds, they were neither in the lead or tied somehow. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing for me is the three-point shooting obviously stands out 16-29. I didn't realize the assist was 29 to 34 makes. That's huge. Like That means that the ball's moving. Um, I mean, it makes sense. You look at, we'll go to some individual stat lines. Like Lawyer has 12 points on four of six from three. Brain, 12 points, four of five from three. Seven assists, four boards to go with it. Uh, TKR, five, five, and three. ED, 16 and 11. Only six shot attempts, so lots of fouls. Uh, Jones, six, three, and three. And then off the bench, Heidi, 13, 3, and 2, Colvin, 8, and a block. Um, and those are probably the, the key ones. So that was a lot of stats. I'm kind of rambling. I'm going to throw it to Craig, so I stop. I, I, you missed one big stat on there. And this what may be the only – you missed – this may be the only time it happens all year. We lost the offensive rebounding battle tonight. Oh, yeah, we did. We, we never <laughs> lose the offensive rebounding battle. And quite frankly um, – it's because like about everything we shot was going in for a large part of the game. Uh, but yeah, they did happen to beat us on that one particular stat tonight. So I, I think, you know, we, we continually, we say this all the time, but we continually get lost in this, right? Um, it feels like Zach didn't have a big game because in the entire first half, they were like, we're not going to let Zach shoot at all. So everybody else shot and they shot well. So there wasn't a need to force it. Zach still finished with a double double, right? He still has 16 yep. points and 11 rebounds. Still has and not a monster Zach Eady game. Not a monster Zach Eady game, but a really good Zach Eady game all the way around. So I, I think we got to remember, um, I think he's our, was he our second leading scorer on the team tonight? He was Pretty leading sure. scorer by three points. Leading, okay, leading scorer. And, you know, we've yet to talk about him. So we can't just assume that he's always going to be great and, and not acknowledge how good he plays each and every night that he's out there. Yeah, like this, I think especially in some of these by games, um, and if we play, if Purdue plays smaller teams, like this is the type of game you're going to see is Sanford's or teams are going to double. I mean, the Sanford coach admitted like double, triple team. That's what your ED is going to see. Um, and then if you make him pay with threes, then ED can kind of get going. You know, still dominant 16, 11, and four in 20 minutes. Like you just can't get much more efficient than that. It's, it's insane. And, it's hard to talk about because it's just like, what is there to say other than he's dominant in basically everything he does? You're muted, Braggs. Add it. Damn Add it. it to the $5 to the damn jar. I'm supposed to be a professional <laughs> around here. Um, yeah, who cares about National Player of the Year? Whoop de doo. Zach Eady. Good for you. We don't in any of these shows. We have to force ourselves to talk about them. 16 points. You know, should t wake me up when you drop 34 like you did against uh, more. What do you have? Like 40 against Michigan State, who's losing 37 to 32 at the half to James Madison. But you're going to keep it locked Can here to Boilers in the yes. stands. What, Joe? I was going to jump in. Can I, I forgot to add that Ethan Morton had five points, five assists, and four steals. And yeah, there's I'm, been a I'm lot of Ethan people, a lot, lot of people in the chat talking up how uh, the game that Ethan had uh, fire away. Yeah, no, I thought he was good. He was. This kind of solidified him as the. I think the. I'm just going to call it a backup ball handler because there were times that him and Jones were on the floor, and either of them really could take it up, depending on just what the situation had. Um, so, but he, you, I think you see him being more comfortable. He knocked down a three that he had pretty much the dudes weren't like on him, but they were right there. And it's usually a time that we're like, Oh, Morton passes that up, um, knocks that down. It's, it's like the game that you want 15 minutes, five points, five assists, four steals. Like that's, um, knocks down a three. If, if Ethan does that every game in 15 minutes, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, Dick still wagging in the chat saying the Prince Princeton beat Rutgers. Yes. His 12 leg, his 12 leg parlay is busted. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, you know, Samford, whatever. Um, obviously you, 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 but just, I just don't, don't take any game for granted, man. Enjoy this journey. Uh, it's a long season to go. 
Um, you know, and, and this is just step one, but you know, other teams tonight are either in a battle or have lost that are teams that, you know, are expected to be good or, or, you know, are hopeful for big years. So, you know, on to the next one here on Friday against Moorhead state, which I will actually be in attendance for. So I'm certainly looking forward to that, uh, back to the stats. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, lighten it up from three point land, but let's just focus on Fletcher lawyer and Braden Smith, four of six from three for Fletcher, four of five for Braden Smith. I mean, we talk about it. This is the key to them getting to a final four guys and Fletcher lawyer right out the gate. You know, first pass comes in, he's wide open. He doesn't hesitate. He knocks it down. Uh, Braden Smith too. First shot he takes, you know, first three, he takes knocks it down. Um, if these guys are going to make a long run in March, which is a long ways away, they got to shoot the three like they did tonight. hundred uh, percent. They got well, to shoot, like, <laughs> they gotta shoot the similar. three. Well, they, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. not like, but they, they, well, can I be in hyperbole land? You're talking to the, <laughs> meat, I'm going to meatball. You can. No, that's you the know? We we balance we balance yeah That's what bring we do me here. back down yeah, yeah yeah um I've I think I've I've said it on both post games so this is the third perfect one now. three point shooting there it is twenty <laughs> seven of seven um Braden and Fletcher are the two most important non ED players to me still and all the athleticism and stuff um, is super important but if Braden and Fletcher are on it just opens up everything else especially Braden with being able to score and pass. Fletch can shoot the ball. I've already said I trust him as a driver um, and, and even like this kind of secondary tertiary uh, facilitator at times. Like I just when they're on. It, Purdue is going to be really, really tough to beat, I think, regardless of who of the whoever of the role players are on or not. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, without a doubt. And I, and I thought they both played really confident tonight. It was interesting to me that almost, well, all four of Lawyer's threes came out of the corner. Um, I think there was one that was up just a little bit, but almost all of them came out of the corner. Um, seemed like they were purposely feeding him there. Braden took him in a several different spots, but he loves that top of the key three-point shot. And he just seems super confident and much more aggressive in, in hunting that shot this year, just in general. And it was kind of funny at the press conference. It almost seemed like, everybody's asking about the new guys and we're talking about the new guys because people felt like they knew what they were getting in, in Fletch coming back and Braden coming back and Zach coming back. But everybody's like, what are the other pieces there that are going to help Purdue get over the top? So that's kind of where the focus on the questions and the pe press conferences have been and people just talking about the Boilermakers in general. And you could almost tell, like, they were uh, getting a little annoyed, like, hey, we're here. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just shot four or five and four or six or whatever it was, like, shot incredible. Um, you know, let's let's talk about us a little bit. Yeah, deservedly so. Uh, we even put out our little social video that I've been working on here for the last week. And, uh, you know, Braden said that Zach Eady was a better three-point shooter than him. So if, you know four of six for Braden or four of five for Braden. That means Zach Eady, you know, just imagine if he, he didn't put up a three tonight. I know somebody had a gripe of that in the chat. Uh, you know, we, you know, Matt Painter promised us 12 attempts on the year and, you know, no three point attempt, uh, really upset Dick Stillwagon. They didn't draw anything up for him. So he had like a 19 footer. Okay. 19 footer. We'll take the 19 footers. I mean, that's certainly further out than he had most of his attempts here last year. Uh, the other thing, you know, from a fan in the stands perspective that really stood out to me in this game was the promotional idea that Purdue, yeah, I'm not saying they invented this idea, but they came up with it to do it at Mackey arena, which is literally like pouring gasoline on a fire. I mean, this is just a, a ingenious, thinking by Purdue. Yes. I know other teams would do it. I do not care. I'm going to just credit Purdue for thinking about this. They made a promotional uh, tool this year that says that at any point at a game at Mackey, if a player on the other team misses both their free throws, when they're attempting two shots, the entire stadium gets a free chicken sandwich. 
And on the very first attempt that someone went to the line, the guy missed the first shot and the place went up for grabs. Robbie Hummels on the telecast. Like I have no idea what's going on, but I promise you the fans are going to win something. If he misses this shot here, because I have never seen a crowd get more loud for a second free throw attempt unless it was for something. And of course it was, it was for free chicken sandwiches. So, I mean, to me, this was a hilarious thing and ingenious because Mackey is already one of, if not the loudest arena in college basketball. And now you've created this moment where if a, if a player misses their first free throw, they're entering this mayhem uh, that the crowd's going to induce. I, I, the only criticism I have towards it is like, don't give up at one free chicken sandwich. Every time it happens, another free chicken sandwich. I mean, how many times is a, a how many times are a team really going to miss two free throws in a row? Like how many it times can possibly today. what twice today? So they would have given away two free chicken sandwiches. I guess the, the money would start adding up there. I don't know. But to me, Let's keep that going because the energy on that first, uh, you know, that first free throw attempts were hilarious. Yeah, it was fun. I, I love it. Um, just Mackie in general. You, you can't beat it. The first lawyer three was absolutely electric. It did get crazy loud. There was even a little bit of a chicken, like chicken chant um, after, you know, the second free throw was missed the first time. Slim chickens also with fire for anybody that doesn't know. Uh, it, it is. Uh, and the chicken sandwich looks opinion. delicious. I, I feel bad that I don't know where it's from. Uh, I should have done Slim my chickens. research. S- what's it called? Slim chickens. Sl- <laughs> Slim chickens. What's so funny? I've never heard of this. I, I don't know. I, I can't believe you've never heard of it. But I've never gotta, heard of Slim chickens. I mean, it's we, not we got, around here. We, we got, got a Canes. We'll go taste test. We got a Canes too, so they're like I think there's a little bit of battle here to to try to carve out the the chicken market. Um, <laughs> chick, and Chick 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 Fil A hasn't been here long either, so we got we got like this three way battle of who's got the best chicken in, in town. So uh, smart move by them to basically try to induce everybody into coming into their operation. All right, slim, slim chickens. Chi- the best slim the chickens. Someone. Free- Slim chickens. Someone, you just got a free yeah. promo on it here on the show. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll pay us. Us. Yeah, Purdue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, pay I us and do wanna, sandwiches. <laughs> I'd be down. Um, I kind of wanted the chats going on with TKR a bit. I think we should probably at least mention him. Um, five points, five rebounds, three assists, one block, one steal in 15 minutes. She made a three, only two shot attempts, two two from the line. Like, I don't think it was a bad game i just wasn't impactful in a game where everybody seemed to be impactful i this is i'll i'll know i'll definitely look for it more when we or when i rewatch the game tomorrow um i don't know i don't think i have too like there's definitely things to improve defensively i think a bit but overall he's just i don't think he hurt purdue today and obviously nobody really hurt purdue today uh, but also wasn't like crazy effective just got to find his role i think he's still probably just trying to figure that all out um hopefully we see it sooner rather than later but even like at a game like today well, this is it's just it is what it is it's it's a what it's an okay game not bad I, five rebounds I did, think, big. I did think he was a lot more active uh, on the on the backboards in general um i just mm-hmm. thought he was he was getting there faster he was reading angles um you know five rebounds and how many minutes did he end up playing so 15 did he take Right. So take that per 40 and he's at 12 rebounds or whatever it may be. Um, So I did think I saw a a little bit of difference on that end, just kind of him realizing his role. And if he can get some of those offensive rebounds, that's a way for him to then generate points for himself in this offense. Um, He also looked really comfortable when he shot that three. Uh, He wasn't necessarily a focal point today in terms of trying to set him up in the post, but he shoots that three in the corner without hesitation, drills it. Um, and I didn't notice anything today spacing wise, like in a couple of the previous games, I, I thought spacing was a little bit clunky around Zach. I don't know if they did things a little bit different or they just kind of operated uh, more closely to how they're supposed to, to make sure there's correct spacing. But I did not notice that really being an issue out there on the offensive end at all. I mean, yeah, did, I, you, did you guys yeah. think 
uh, as Dave, Dave Kovich here from ISC Purdue here in our chat. Um, and he says pace of game matters for TKR. And I can see that, you know, in a game where they're trying to push the tempo and you got two guys in ED and TKR who, when they get the ball, they're slowing everything down, you know, cause they want to get into their, you know, whatever combo dribble combo motion and TKR always likes to turn his back uh, to the basket and kind of get into his move of how he's going to get to his right hand. And uh, you know, is, is he a good fit? you know, for what they're trying to do if they are going to try to push the tempo? Um, I think I think that's fair to be like, maybe this isn't the pure, the game, the game script for him. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like, I'm I know it's kind of a cop out, but I'm still just kind of in the wait and see a little bit on him. I know the season isn't crazy long and we want to see production soon. Um, I do think like. I don't know how I want to phrase this because like TKR, there was a reason TKR got all the hype the off season. Like, and I still 100% believe that's going to come through. If maybe he didn't, then um, like maybe we aren't as like concerned with him right now. If that makes any sense, like we're almost holding him to this higher standard because we, people are saying he has the talent and I, I agree. Like he has the talent to get to that level, but it just hasn't shown yet. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's it's a cop out, but that's my overall thoughts on him. He did knock down a three. Uh, Josh in the chat asked, is TKR consistent enough from three is the big question. Uh, Craig, what are your overall thoughts with TKR? Um, I mean, he shot a hundred percent for three tonight. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Keep that up. Uh, 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 Yeah. Not, not a large sample size, but you know, if, if you watched him on that Europe trip, if you've watched him a little bit in practice or scrimmages, whatever it is, he's been super comfortable stepping into it um, all summer and all fall. Uh, he He's not necessarily hit all the time, uh, but it looks pretty smooth, and he steps into it with, with a lot of confidence that he's going to knock it down. So I won't be surprised. <coughs> Excuse me. I won't be surprised at all. I mean, I don't think he's going to take three or four a game, uh, but it won't surprise me at all if he gets up to the point where he shoots two of those a game, um, kind of playing off of Edie. Okay, yeah, so, I, yeah. I mean, I already talked about TKR in general to, to kind of start this, but sure. I, I just thought I thought he was a lot more active today, personally. Right, on the boards, and <clears throat> that's, you know, where where he's, you know, because you're they're always going to be throwing as many bodies as they can at Zach Eady. So that means a guy is coming off TKR. So he's got to, you know, first for all, his, you know, if, you know, he's not knocking down a shot or whatever, first is always good at uh, like never stop moving. Right. And uh, TKR has got to really find that too. You got to keep the energy going, keep moving, you know, keep cutting, keep crashing the board because a lot of times your guy is going to be shading off on Zach Eady. Uh, Corey Lesney here in the chat, who's always like, you know, I think he's trying to look at things from the other side of the coin. He's looking at this team with a sharp eye, comes in our chat, and we appreciate his support. And he's like, these guys constantly throwing bouquets at this team. I want to hear some hard criticism. And he says, okay, guys, what was concerning for you guys tonight? So I'll start with you, uh, Craig, or Joe, go ahead, and then we'll go to Craig. Yeah, I was, um, the turnovers is definitely a thing. I think they started to figure it out a little bit against the press during the game, but 15 turnovers, I, somebody said three came at, or Jeff Parks said three came at a garbage time. Even so, that's 12. You don't hate it against a team that's pressing like that. Still would like that to be a little bit lower. Um, and then I do, I got to call back a little bit to last with, with Corey of, Last game, Corey was like, are you worried about anybody? And my answer was, give it time, right? That was my general answer. And so with that, I can't be a hypocrite and be like, everything's fixed because there was one good game. My my concern, I guess, is just seeing this again. Uh, Maybe not 55% from three, but lawyer shooting the ball well. Brain continuing to get to his spots. Um, Some of these guys off Heidi, like continuing to find his role on this team. TKR eventually, hopefully, like figuring out what he needs to do exactly. So um, the you know the turnovers free throws were not the best um but turnovers and then just being able to do this again and again which i guess isn't a concern specifically from this game but more just in general okay i see there you go some balanced analysis now craig what worried you the most 
Um, I don't know if it worried me the most uh, because, you know, I, if we're going to point that out, I, I would say turnovers. But in general, this game and, and a couple of games prior to, I still think there's some guys that are really working through uh, feeding Edie uh, with that entry pass. It, it's a lost art. And the guys who've been here and done it for a while in a game situation um, do a pretty nice job of it. But there's some times you'll see Jones throw that pass where it's it's just not there yet. And that, that's where his one turnover in the first half came from uh, was off of an entry pass that, that shouldn't have been thrown. Um, whether it's Heidi um, or Colvin trying to make that entry pass, TKR just because he didn't do a ton of that high-low entry pass last year, I think all those guys, and they're going to do that more this year. So I think all of those guys just kind of getting the, the feel for that uh, of when to feed them, how to feed them, where exactly to put that ball to make sure it's clean, I think is going to be really important for us because we need all of those guys to play some minutes. Um, and <laughs> if they're going to play minutes, uh, there's a really good chance that they're going to have to feed Zach at times. So I, I think I don't think it's a big worry. Um, but I think it's something that's going to take a month before those guys get super comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I always find a way to slide in some Sasha Stefanovic love here on boilers in the stands, but that was something he was very, very, very good at great at, and something that was un very, that was underappreciated by the fans because he made it look so easy when your players do good entry passes it's something that goes unnoticed but when they can't get it in there that's when you start to realize just how valuable that trait is so i, I think that's a very salient salient point there by you craig and no surprise there you're full of good points especially when you do your 10 thoughts are you gonna do are you doing your 10 thoughts this year yeah let's not bring that up are you going to get done your... with these shows until like 10, Craig, 15? You are not I gotta allowed go... to sleep. We need the 10 thoughts. I got to go home and feed sheep. Uh, still tonight. It's I'd be up till one o'clock in the morning. If I do those on top of this, I get through 10 points in this. So um, that's true. That's true. I, I, I may uh, when depending on what we end up doing, launching some other stuff, I, I may still go back to those 10 points. Cause I know there are people who are on Facebook that, um, or maybe a, a little bit older than I am yet, and maybe don't stay up as late. They're not to, in the to, podcasting world. They need the yeah. written. They need the written content, uh, and that's yeah. what we're going to try to provide here this one, year. So one last quick point be, before we. I don't know if we're about ready to finish up. I think we've yeah, talked about we, most of it. But, yeah, but one, I mean, one, but, one last quick point. This this team won the SoCon regular season last year. This team is top 120 in Haslametrics. Um, this team is picked to fish, finish second in the SoCon this year. That's um, a pretty competitive league. So I, I think <laughs> I don't want it to get lost in like, oh, they were supposed to blow them out by 50. I think the spread was somewhere around 20. I, I think I saw that in the chat. Um, you know, and when we had Haslametric or Haslam on the show the other day, you know, he said, Hey, that team's going to scrap for a while. And I thought this game might be close for the first 10, 12, 13 minutes before Purdue really started to pull away. Um, so this, this is a, an impressive performance, even though it's against somebody that's not near on the same caliber level, but let's remember it, it's teams that were <laughs> kind of similar to what this team is that has given Purdue trouble in the past. And I made a comment to another podcaster who will name nameless that one of the reasons Lance Jones is here in my mind is to make sure we don't lose to those teams. And to me, you saw that. So just his physicality, bringing the ball up, breaking things down. Um, man, we look so much better against the press. Most of our turnovers were in the half court or when Lance was off the floor in terms of, of, of trying to break that press in general. Yeah. Um, so we got Corey Lesney here as we wrap things up. Corey Lesney here in the chat saying, hands down, my biggest concern is the shot volume from Jones and Lawyer will minimize Edie's numbers. So, um, you know, I think he's concerned. Joe, you had a thought on this? Because, um, I don't know, last game it was Jones and TKR. He's had that kind of the similar comments. Like, I don't know. The Jones was 3 of 9, 0 for 4 from 3. Two of them were, you know, three seconds on the shot clock. Uh, you can't blame him. So then he has seven shots. Uh, you want to see a couple fall. If lawyers four for six from three, like four for seven overall, I don't see an issue with that. Even if he's, you know, 
two of six, three of six. Like you, you need him to shoot. Um, and I don't think it's as much them as much as what the defense does for me. Like if defenses are going to throw that many bodies at Edie off ball, somebody's got to shoot the ball or else there's a, you know, there's a March Madness game that we could go watch and I'll kind of show you what happens when players are scared to shoot the ball against that. Like that's just, that's what's happens. And, um, now there's good. Now, if they're giving single coverage to Edie and Lawyer and Jones are still just or Jones especially is kind of still just jacking them up, then yeah, I, I think that would be the concern. I just don't think that the defense has played that way yet on Edie. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And Brad Prather says, "Watch the show. The ten points are in here." And then Braden <laughs> Bowers says, "Dad's pretty close to the written form." I I it's a good, I don't I don't get the joke, but I had to put it up because it sounds like it's a joke at you. I, I don't think it's a joke. I, I think joke? he's saying. <laughs> I think he's saying I pretty much would have, uh, you know, already hit on all the points that would be written. Okay, so. I thought maybe it was a joke. I was hoping it was, but I if it was, it was over my head, and clearly it wasn't a joke, so it's still over my head, which isn't a surprise as we enter the Midwestern goodbye portion of the show. Um, Want to give. Um, uh, yeah, Derek Mulligan says, um, you know, wow, I think we might be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good assessment. 44-44, uh, James Madison and Michigan State all knotted up with 14 and a half minutes to go. So it'll be interesting to see how that wraps up. Do want to give a shout out real quick to Amy, who um, my a good friend of my mom's, and, and she was able to go to the game today. Um, my mom and I weren't able to go, so we gave – our tickets over to them and she was nice enough to get in line early enough not to make everyone in here jealous and in the chat but i do want to thank her because she got there early enough to pick up one of those rings and throw it my way so um pretty cool it was a cool giveaway another fan in the stands thing i definitely wanted to highlight they gave away a ring uh big 10 championship ring or the big 10 tournament championship ring and uh, for the first 2,500 fans that entered, and I've seen pictures of them, uh, they look pretty cool for a replica ring. Um, so shout out to Purdue, always thinking about the fans, always doing cool things, giving out free chicken sandwiches, giving out you know uh, replica rings that look pretty badass. And we're giving out a free Zach Eady jersey, signed Zach Eady jersey, once we hit 1,000 followers on Twitter and we're less than 150 followers away from reaching that mark. And we've only been an account for a week and a half. So the push to 1,000 has begun here before Friday. Let's get it done so we can pick a lucky winner. Maybe I'll have some other things to give away. I'll try to come up with some other things to give some of the fans because that's what we do. We appreciate the fan support here at boilers in the stand stay tuned as i kind of teased on twitter uh for merchandise to become available for our new boilers in the stands logo on shirts and mugs and stickers and uh long sleeve shirts and sweaters and everything in between uh we'll have announcements on that shortly and yes jb please hit that like button on your way out we appreciate your support and it certainly helps us doing what we're trying to do subscribe to the channel here at Bra the Brags in the Stands Network and, and turn your notifications on for every show we do. Craig, do you want to, before we get going, tell everybody what we're going to be doing on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, Wednesday. Uh, really excited for the guests that we're going to bring on. Conzo Martin's going to come on at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, those of you that were around to watch the Glenn Robinson Big Dog era know that Conzo was kind of his Robin uh to to glenn's batman there as far as that goes um really interesting guy he's coached at the highest levels uh he's played at some of the he's played at the highest levels both in college and got to play some years in the nba um has some time on his hands right now so just really looking forward to being able to sit down and talk to him kind of about some of those KD years and playing around big dog and then just his career path in general and where he's at right now yeah also and he was also, my son was making a joke. He was calling me old, saying I was closer to appreciating the written form over podcasting. <laughs> see, I had a feeling it was a it was a joke at your expense. So, see, it wasn't over my head. I just didn't quite understand where he was going with it. But any joke at Craig's expense, I'm going to sign off on because uh, I enjoy giving Craig shit as well. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, was 
he was also a part of the um, intro for the season, you know, mm-hmm. the narrator for the season, you know, intro video, which the Purdue social team did such a great job with, uh, you know, I just, the, 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 the content is getting better and better every year and Purdue basketball, you know, for being, you know, from small town West Lafayette compared to other, you know, parts of the country, they do such a great job with their social content yes. and engagement is right up there with the tops of the tops, you know, Duke and Kentucky and everyone else. And that just shows you the support that Purdue fans have for their, for their athletics here, you know, in West Lafayette. And we feel that here at boilers in the stands. So that was a really cool video. Excited to have him on here coming up on Wednesday. Shout out to Craig uh, for getting that done, locking that in. So um, yeah, definitely Dave COVID shout out to the creative services and Paul Sadler. Uh, those guys have been great. They've been great to us. Um, and so, and David Kovic has been great to us here at ISC Purdue providing us with the, the great images you're seeing on some of our thumbnails, some of the photos we, you know, share along on Twitter, sometimes even on these shows, um, those all come from ISC Purdue. So make sure you're following them on Twitter, uh, you know, and, and going to their website and taking in their content as well. So, uh, I think that wraps things up for tonight. As long as you guys are good to go, I'm good to roll. You guys good to roll. You guys want to get to get to your chicken sandwiches. It sounds good. Do you guys get good. chicken might... sandwiches? Do you guys get like a ticket I, before you leave? I didn't oh, no. get one. Oh, jeez. No. Well, maybe I'll scour the stands. You, know, you do get the media, you know, no complaining because they, you know, they give you a good meal in the media room, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it was, do. it was. It was fire tonight. Corn oh, beef. Oh, oh, heck yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. Good. I like that attitude. All right. That wraps things up, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in on Wednesday. And then, of course, Friday for another post game show, which um, uh, I'll be in attendance for. So just uh, be patient with us as we try to go live as fast as we can for some of these early game shows, um, post game shows, and, and we'll do everything we can. Yes, it is the goddamn Midwestern. Goodbye. So we'll see you here on Wednesday evening and always, always boiler up.